So should we call the October 26, 2023 meeting of the Charter Revision Commission to order? Um, does anyone have any comments about the minutes or would someone like to make a motion to approve them of the last meeting? I can make a motion to approve. Um, Joy makes a motion to approve the minutes of September 21st, I think. Mm -hmm. September 21st, 2023 meeting. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 I'll abstain because I was absent. Okay. Thank you. Six yes and one abstention. Um, tonight we have a couple of things on the agenda. Um, one of the first thing is the recap of the select board meeting that members of the Charter Commission attended. I was not there. So Maya is everybody gonna, else was, I think. Yep, yeah, everybody. So Maya was gonna give an initial overview and then have everybody what she thinks she might forget, everyone else can mm -hmm. add in. Okay. I tried to jot down some notes while people were talking. Uh, I know there was there were comments about RTM. Um, I think mostly from Dick to Gray, but I think some select board people might have chimed in. Mm -hmm. um, and they were interested in, in discussing size, um, how people get elected. And I'm, I'm not sure what they meant by that, what Dick meant by that. Um, and requiring um, RTM members to have district meetings. Um, the next item that I have down is the select board, and I think this was mostly Ian. Um, he wanted us to look at the number of people on the select board, and particularly the role of the chair. And then there was some discussion about the one percent added tax and how which I be honest with you I did not fully understand but there is some mechanism by which we could get the whole one percent instead of three quarters yes <laughs> explain that please <laughs> I don't mean to be a, a, a party pooper but that that really is incorrect um, so, so the local option sales tax is uh, a municipality is empowered to, to put the local option sales tax in place by virtue of 24 VSA section 138, I believe it is. And, and that section of the statute explicitly states that the State Department of Taxes will collect um, um, the sales tax and will provide, uh, it, it's very explicit about the uh, cost of doing so and the net result to the uh, participating municipality. What, what, I believe, um, um, what I believe Dick is referring to is in, for example, Burlington, they also impose what's called a gross receipts tax, which is uh, available to them by virtue of their charter. Um, and that gross receipts tax, which is an additional tax on business in Burlington that doesn't exist in Brattleboro, um, that is collected by their local finance department. Um, so we, we, we researched that, I think, fairly completely um, in, I think it was 2017. Back. Yeah, and um, at least Rutland also has that. It's possible that there are other places in the state that do, but Rutland and Burlington each have um, independent authority in the way that Patrick just described to yeah. impose this additional thing. And we should look at that when we look at what we might glean from other charters that we might want to take advantage of. Um, so I think the intention of Ditch Point is well taken. Um, the particular details were not quite on, as Patrick just described. What, when you did that assessment, did you look at whether it would be feasible to actually collect the tax? Right. So um, <laughs> that, that's one of the things we'll need to weigh if we get into discussing this is um, there are some practicality issues for um, 
you know, the likelihood is that it would require an additional staff person, probably, but that's something we don't need to talk about. Um, in terms of, it, it, it isn't, um, it isn't without effort that you assess a tax like that because you have to put a lot of energy into determining like who owes what and then making sure that each person is paying their fair share. It's a lot easier for us. It's, it is frustrating um, and it's in Vermont, the state keeps a lot more than other states keep in that kind of a relationship around a local option tax. So um, in many other states, it would be like five or 10% that they would keep instead of a third. <laughs> Um, and that does cause you to kind of grind your teeth about what we yield from imposing this on the, the local businesses and consumers. But um, doing the alternative of imposing it ourselves and collecting it ourselves is um, a lift. And so one of the things we'd want to be considering is um, whether that looks worth it to us as something to include in the charter. Seems to me that the follow up on Dick's comment is something that we've talked about um, addressing as part of this charter review process, which is looking at a range of different potential mm -hmm. local revenue generation options. Mm -hmm. um, I think Peter referred to it in terms of our being a Finland's rule mm -hmm. state and seeking to determine whether we can get the legislature to authorize us to do things through the charter, which is still a Dillon's rule process, I right. think. Yep. But yeah. we could look at a range of revenue generation options rather than just the things that are made available. If we were drawing this, I think there'd be the revenue generation ideas. We want to look at a variety of things that maybe some other people haven't tried that we think are worthwhile. Um, and then there's the you know gathering good ideas from other people's charters. And there would be an intersection of those two circles that includes this tax that's levied in Burlington and in Rutland. And it, it might make sense as we're planning going ahead to think about having one of our meetings or part of one of our meetings just focusing on ideas for revenue. local revenue generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's all I had from the select board. I know there were some other things that um, I forgot. Hmm. No? Um, I don't think. Um, anything really forgotten. I would say um, it was Franz who was also a proponent of looking at RTM again, the amount yeah. of folks. Um, and yeah, the district meeting I heard from, I feel like I heard from him as well, so. He was the one that talked about how people get elected <laughs> or don't get yeah. elected. Um, I think, yeah, be, couldn't can't fill slates the whole slate. I know yeah. I was <laughs> appointed at the district meeting to serve at RTM, so yeah, it doesn't have the same um, maybe prestige that it used to. I think That's that there's a potential for a robust discussion about how representative town meeting functions without getting into too much of the content. Most of the state uses town meeting as a form of participatory democracy. And I've always viewed representative town meeting as a hybrid participatory and representative democracy. And I strongly disagree with the suggestion that we should limit down the number of people. Um, uh, which was Mr. DeGray's primary uh, uh, yeah, suggestion. Yeah, talked about size. Right, yeah. right. But I think that it should be part of a broader discussion about the form of government that the town has. We voted down the mayoral form of government, but that's one alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, we might want to at least have that on the agenda to at least serve as contrast to the form of government we have. And I think we might succeed in getting some interest from people in the town if we were to set a meeting to talk about representative town meeting or town meeting uh, just as a whole i would sort of be a proponent of having participatory town meeting and not representative town meeting because i'm not 
convinced that the rationale from the late 50s is really uh, um, viable and, 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 and a necessary reason to have representative town meeting. But I think before we have a meeting with the public about representative town meeting, we should plan how we're going to have that discussion. Because I don't want to just have an open forum without some direction and clear agenda about how the what discussion would be structured. layered, since there is the list serve for the district, those that actually served at RTM, hit them first and say, you did this, come, and then the second one be everyone else. You mm -hmm. haven't done this before. Come and tell us what you think. Um, so that way it is sort of the folks who have participated and then a little bit bigger. My one concern with that is that if the issue with RTM is that there's not enough participation, the only people that are going to participate in a discussion about RTM are the people who come to RTM. And it's sort of giving them this disproportionate weighted vote, which it seems to be the issue with RTM generally, that you're giving a lot of power to individual people that, who choose to be involved. And, you know, it. it uh, as someone who more recently moved to Brattleboro and moved to Brattleboro when RTM was online, it didn't. I didn't really register with the fact that this was sort of different from every other town, and I didn't really register with the fact that if I didn't choose to run for RTM or talk to whoever my representative was, then my, I wouldn't get any kind of say. So I think that I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I think that <laughs> one thing we have to think about is how to get people other than this sort of narrow group of people that seem to be really involved in this form of town government to have a say in this. Mm -hmm. I think it's both and. And um, one of the things I think would be valuable about having the people who have served have an evening with us, not to say necessarily first bite of that apple, but, but having a time when we do have a discussion with them separately is that we've heard over the years a lot of feedback about how town meeting functions in addition to the, the ongoing debate about you know should we even have RTM should it be this many members whatever but but um, a lot of not very positive feedback actually about just how the day unfolds um, and um, I know there's people who have participated in it that have um, a variety of opinions around how it could be improved and I think it would help us to hear from them yeah, yeah. And there was the committee that was appointed by RTM to look at RTM. I was on it. We did do a survey of all RTM members. So there are like lots of opinions. And, um, you know, so that could be a starting point too, just to, to know that there are all these opinions. And, and I think you get some of the people on the committee to come. And you could get, you know, so it's, there's, a, there's a variety of information out there. We just, we do have to just figure out what do we use and how do we make the best of it. And I do agree we need to get new people involved. Um, you know, maybe say, I, I think it's how you, how you, you know, say there are different forms of government we can have. You can have the mayoral system, you can have RTM, you can have, you know, a, just a um, participatory town meeting style and maybe that'll get people involved if it's not just we want to talk about RTM you know what I mean so it, it's just how we talk say we want what we want to talk about mm -hmm. it's all about headlines so it is Grab their attention. <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely sounds like I think at least two if not more <laughs> RTM meetings mm -hmm. from what what I okay. felt coming away from that select board hearing others it definitely sounded like so then I like layered or uh, multiple times to make sure folks it works for them. Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is, it definitely sounds like at least two. Anything else? Did I forget anything else? Okay. Okay. Now the next issue is, and I and I had a email exchange about this, is. Um, you know, we've got all the, the notes that we had from the last meeting with the um, town staff. And we need to start figuring out a way to organize this 
you know, we're collecting all of this information, but how do we organize it? So the thought is, um, and you guys, and you can tell me, no, this is not a good way to do it. I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. Is um, not just for this, but as we collect more information, because we know that we're going to get the, the committees next time. And tonight, if this is okay with you folks, we go through each of these and we put them in, I have four different buckets, but if you have less or more or you want to change them, and put them in different buckets so we can understand what each change is. And what I was thinking of, simple edits, you know, is it a grammatical change or do we want to change it to from her and his to they and there. Um, and that edits that are needed because of a policy change, either on the town or state level, like the school board is, is an issue. Um, things that we want, either want to say we need to keep or consider keeping or consider eliminating because they already address something that's in a town ordinance or state statute. You know, it exists somewhere else. Does it need to be in our charter for that reason? And then something that's a proposed policy change, which is a little bit bigger, you know, like changing the number of people in town meeting, or changing our system of government. <coughs> so the thought would be to go through, and I don't think it's going to take us a lot of time, to go through each of these and say, this is what we think this is. So we'll have them in these buckets. And then what, what Maya and I would do is put a proposal together you folks, for you folks on, here's how we, you know, here are the topics you, you put them in the categories, and then you say, well, these are all RTM things, these are all blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So that we can figure out what the topics that we should be talking about at me, you know, structure them topic-wise. And that where it comes in, you know, RTM. Um, and we can, you know, there's some things that are just simple changes that would be to RTM, or there's the more thing. But if we can organize things in that fashion, and sort of carry that through when we talk to, um, the town committees or anything else. So we're keeping this in a way that's really structured by topic, but we know what the issues are under each topic. You know, whether it's an edit or, does this make any sense what I'm saying? Can I ask a, a sort of follow-up procedural yeah. question? Yeah. So is our, is our goal to have all of these edits of all these different kinds mm -hmm. to all be sort of decided on collectively? I, I, I just I guess my 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 question is are these things like simple procedural edits or grammatical edits are those going to be given what like are, is there a chance that those wouldn't go through because of some of the, the policy edits that we attached to it? like it's all going to be sort of decided on as a whole oh no I well that's all I think for us to decide the way I see it is if it's a changing a he or a she to they or there yeah, you we should, should do it. We should right, do right. that. Yeah, no, but, I'm saying but, when, when it goes to, oh. to the to the to the town or to, to whoever to, to ratify it, does it all sort of go as one? Oh, so it's just we okay. create yeah. a draft yeah. of a charter of a complete yeah. charter yeah. with yeah. all our edits and everything. Okay. So in and mass, the yes. days and the RTM edits are all the same. So they rule against well, the RTM. We might yeah. be stuck with the same no. gender issues for ten years. So. No, no. Okay. I, I think that. We're going to work through all of the potential revisions to the charter here at the Charter Revision Commission. We're going to come up with, and the end product is going to be a draft that all of us have collectively agreed um, should be recommended uh, then to the town for adoption. And I think we're going to pitch it to them as a whole product, which is the result of our collective work after taking all the input. Yeah. And then if part of it is rejected or voted down, then we can come back to the drawing board and make some additional changes if we think that's appropriate. So there will be some sort of mechanism to vote down certain parts, but not others. I, I think we'll present, my view would be that we would present the entirety of the product when it's being presented for review. Yeah, I agree that that's the, the more simple and probably better way to go about it. It just seems like then you you're, you might be throwing the baby out with the bathwater and, and making some sort of simple changes tied into these bigger changes that might be more decisive. What, what previous groups have done is 
present a draft and gotten feedback and then where there have been real areas of controversy they've come back and talked about it and come up with something else that they present and it gets voted on as a whole it gets voted on it gets voted on first by rtm right I think it does. Oh, so the select board has to warn a meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's technically it's the select board's going to say, yeah, we like this, we're going to warn a meeting. Then it goes to RTM, and, and it's voted on there. And then it, if it passes, it goes to the legislature. Um, you know, the previous, you know, we looked through all of this stuff, and what they did, too, in the past, is there's an explanation on each thing, saying here's why we, um, think we should do it this way. And then there was always debate um, amongst the people as we go through. So it really, it is, it is sort of, as David said, it's sort of, we can do it however we want. And I get what you're saying mm -hmm. too. But I think if we all agree, if we're going forward with a strong document. Will it be a line by line reading during RTM of the proposed charter? They get. I mean, they yeah. certainly have time, and it's in the prep material. But will do you think RTM will go line by line across the proposed charter? Yeah, they, they wouldn't be um, debating it line by line. Mm -hmm. They'd be debating it as a whole. But how um, picky the body chooses to be about particular sections is mm -hmm. going to depend on uh, the what individuals people have react to, say. to yeah. right. So it could. We, we've seen with. Um, uh, proposed changes to the charter when it wasn't a whole charter I've not been part of that process before but but when we've taken individual amendments to the RTM they haven't always been just voted up or voted down there's been occasions when they were actually kind of picked apart a little bit and modified some and then acted upon and I think it's quite likely that that might happen at RTM with what we bring forward it's also true something we should just we can't control it, but we should just have it in the back of our minds is when this gets all done locally, when we're done and the select board has put it on RTM and RTM has acted on it and it goes up to Montpelier, the legislature can do anything with it. They can change our language, they can remove pieces of it, they might approve it as we submit it, but yeah. And that's why I think getting our legislative delegation involved is yes. very important too. Yeah. Raising your pen, or you're just. Well, she's I'm just raising my pen. <laughs> right. and so it seems to me that the structure that Kate and Maya have proposed for going through these um, proposed revisions that were submitted by staff um, could serve as the foundational framework for organizing changes and and the totality of. What we're presenting as a whole and then when we get to presenting this to town meeting we probably could if we chose to ask for an agenda for that town meeting to be developed by select board that broke out specific categories of things and so some of it could just be basic edits some of it could be policy changes there could be some substantial things that we're proposing that we put as separate items and then it would organize the discussion mm -hmm. in a way that would make it less of a free-for-all and more uh, allow for dedicated discussion of all pieces but hopefully we would have worked through a lot of that uh, in work sessions before it's even presented to town meeting because that's the goal right to have as much public input not that we have any today um, uh, so that we we have somebody on there Two. Two people. Excellent. Oh, okay. Hi. Excellent. <laughs> you know, so that we gathered as much input as we can before we even get to that stage. Yeah. I agree with everything uh, David just said. I, I, there's one part of this that makes me feel a little anxious, and I think that I should just get over it, but I need to say it <laughs> out loud. And that is that some of these matters are complex enough that pieces of them are going to fit into oh, yes. more than that. one of those yes. categories. Yeah. Yeah. And just I'm, I'm concerned about even for us and especially when we go out to engage with the community and then ultimately when you know 140 RTM members are considering this that um, something like what's going to happen to RTM or what's going to happen with the revenue raising authority or um, other other sorts of things that are um, potentially going to have um, more than one of, be, be in more than one of these buckets 
it'll be important for us to really intentionally present that chunk also somehow. I'm not, we don't have to decide that now. I think putting the, the particular pieces into the buckets does make sense. Yeah. But I'm concerned about that one piece. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Because some of them, there is overlap on some of this stuff. And I think it was, Hannah, I don't know if it was you, we were talking about the school board. And it's like, do we totally eliminate it? Or do we keep something in just in case if something comes back? So it's, it's mm -hmm. stuff like that that could be in the, we're going to eliminate it. We, we should consider eliminating it, but maybe we shouldn't. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's, it's yeah. that's probably too a simplistic example. But that's what I was thinking of too. There's some things that could go either way on some of this stuff mm -hmm. in multiple places. Mm -hmm. yep. So does that make sense? Yep. For right. Sure. I mean, we're, we're going to think of things as we go along, too. Um, and I think if we can keep ourselves somewhat organized, it'll, it'll be easier. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll read these things again. And it looks like it's going to take forever because we got all this stuff. But some of it is just really fast. So if you don't mind, we can go through and just make this determination. And so it would be things that are easy, simple edits like grammar, um, edits that are needed because of policy changes, whether around the town or state, and then things we might want to consider keeping in or eliminate it because they're addressed in a town ordinance or state statute. Or they're in the charter twice. Twice, right. That's good. And um, any really substantial, I mean, not even substantial, but policy changes that we want to bring up. Um, so if we want to just, we can just start from the beginning, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. um, and people can just tell me what you think, or I can tell you what I think, but I don't want to hog it. Um, so the first thing is considering adding originally adopted 1927. That's an, <laughs> that's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we have. Um, Article 2, Section 2, which is the consider including the elected officials um, as set forth in 17 BSA. So it's adding um, more elected officials to that piece. Is that an edit? Well, it's kind of do we do it, because it's already somewhere else. Or right. Are the ones that are in here already somewhere else? Like, well, are we adding more redundancy, or are we making this match <laughs> what's in the statute? Right. Well, that's that's a that's a pivotal question, and it becomes pivotal in some of these other things. Where do we eliminate it because it's already in state statute? You know what I mean? Like, this is a do we add it in, and then we're going to get to do we eliminate? Okay, so the note I have that says to either reference the statute or list them all out because it, I guess this is a partial list. Yes. Yeah. So should we get to we There is a partial list, I believe, in the charter. Yeah, that's what right. we're talking about. This so do we do we do we expand the list or do we eliminate the list altogether? That's the question. So right. But it <laughs> seems there is RTM as the first one, which would have to be listed because it's unique to Brattleboro. But the other ones are, are they likely to change from the state often? Right, that's what we need to figure out. And so so it, oh, it still at this point it seems like it's, it has to be both. I you could reference the statute and say these need done. Unique to Brattleboro is section two A. Yeah. How's about this too? Um, when I'm saying things to keep or eliminate, how about things to add, keep, or eliminate because they're somewhere else? Yeah. So that can be that category. Yes. You know that 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 fixes what Hannah is talking about. We have to decide if we want to add the so, elected So as far as categories go, yes, that is that yes. category. Yes. What we do with it can be decided later. But right. yes, that's yeah. the category. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get to um, Article 2, Section 3. Policy change. B. Yep. It's policy. Yep. That's the number of town meeting reps. Or members, when we change it. Um, then we have Article Two, Section Four, A, um, 
which is whether the town clerk and moderator should be voting members um, and whether they should be registered for mob vote or Brattleboro voters. That's another question. Those are policy changes That's as well. Policy. Yeah. Um, then we have Article 2, Section 4, another one at Section 4A is clarifying the statement about RTM, how it, quote, exercises exclusively all powers vetted in the voters of Vermont. Policy. Does everybody agree, policy? Mm -hmm. um, then it's the, um, oh yes, uh, Article 2, Section 4, A3 is, um, oh, it's the date. It says that the date of town meeting shall be confirmed that the preceding annual town meeting it shall remain the same until changed by representative town meeting. So the, the question from town staff is, do we need to put that in since um, like it really never happens? I think it's a policy thing again. I mean, some of these do overlap into the first category, which is just language change, but since we have to make a decision. Yeah. Um, Article 2, Section 4C is about, should it specify how many members there should be to the Finance Committee? It's a policy thing. And then um, Article 3, Section 2B is um, how many, uh, how, how many uh, names are required to get <coughs> Uh, petition to move forward with an or change in ordinance. To me, that would be policy. That's policy. Yeah. Um, that's another one that's just us. Then it's section Article 3, Section 2D, which is. Um, Oh, oh they want to add new section. Oh, yeah, add order. it. That's why it's not there. They want to add an entirely new section, which would deal with binding, um, binding action, action by RTM. So that's a policy. It would make RTM, instead of you know the other business, when it's non-binding, giving the option of a binding. Um, Article 3, Section 5A is about recall and whether that should be an addition before um, cause. And whether the percentage is appropriate. Right. So that's so also policy. policy. Mm -hmm. um, section 4, I mean, I'm sorry, Article 4, Section 5F, which is, oh, it's all about certifying um, when the select board makes an appointment to a board of commission, it has to go to the town clerk um, to be certified or shall be certified to the town clerk. I guess it never happens, so Hillary said it never happens, so do we really want to do that? And Could say again what it is? I'm sorry, I don't um, have my charter open. Um, what it is is when the select board makes an appointment to a board of commission, it's supposed to go um, to oh, wow. the town clerk. It hasn't ever, at least Hillary's yeah. never seen that it's gone to the town clerk. So her recommendation is, do we yeah. really need to do it since this never happened? That, that feels <laughs> it's 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 borderline. Policy, policy. Yeah. but it's really it's more policy. almost like a category two, like a like just making it match the actual practice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the category? Yeah. Well, so, um, maybe that's the good justification. Like the it is technically yeah. policy, but the justification is match practice and policy. Yeah. yeah. Because even an edit I, or. I adding. think it's worth having that as a subcategory of policy because there are a few others in here that are going to. Like to match yeah. actual practice. That's Where it's been years and years of practice, right. which is sort of like. Um, you know, a, a prescriptive easement across somebody's lawn. <laughs> When you've been doing it for so long and haven't been told to stop, it's kind of the new policy. Exactly. Um, We're going to be able to divide these into broader categories within the policy as well. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. a much more business. organized discussion. Yeah. 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 That's that's sort of the goal here is to figure it out and put it in places so that we can actually digest what we're talking about. 
Um, then section four, I mean, it's article four, section five F. Um, this is where we have all the committees listed. Um, Group two. Oh yeah. Edits. Well, well, isn't it a? I mean, there's some people that have told me that they don't think we should list all the committees. You know, I think this sort of goes back to the elected officer question, where it's like, do you want it to match the, the yes. positions that are permitted by statute? Yeah. I think there's some discussion about putting it in an addendum so it's easier to change. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what category we want to call that. Yeah, it feels like add, add, modify, delete. Yeah. Then we get to um, section, I'm sorry, Article 4, Section 5H. Um, oh, this is about what the 15 years is yeah. mm -hmm. for, the, for the charter. That policy. That's yeah. a policy thing. Um, then Section 4, I'm sorry, I can't get it for the Article 4, um, Sections. 6Y. Yes, yeah, 6Y, which is, um, the note I have is that it's oh. basically building code stuff. That's right. And and do we want to keep all the building code things in? And if we do keep the bold, um, building code things in, there's um, some of it is not relevant anymore because it's, it's just I, not I think that's another one to um, make match um, what actually happens. The add, um, modify, delete? Yeah. Because we do have fire prevention and housing codes, but we don't have anything else. No, that's what Hillary, they were saying. Like, we, yeah. if we're going to keep it, we need to actually make it either eliminate it or make it match what we're doing. So that also overlaps then into having the charter match other policies? Yeah. Yeah. So it's added modify and delete and matching other policies? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then we get to, oh, then we'll get that one. Can um, we skip 6Y? Not right now. We just did. About That's what we're oh, talking about. We talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because there's two of them. There's and then eight, 14. Like, oh. Yeah, eliminate the whole thing. And if we choose not to eliminate the whole yeah, thing, yeah, right. then do the building code yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so that's all that. And then the next one is uh, Article 6, which is all about the school district. And that's the one, I think it was you, Hannah, that said, you know, there was recommendation we take it all out, or do we leave something in so that if it goes back to something else, like some sort of enabling language that would not require a charter revision if circumstances were to change. Right, right. Um, so we can put that in the things to keep at or eliminate. If that makes sense to everybody, then we can discuss that. Um, then we have one of these, um, Article 7, Section 2, which is all about the Capital Grants Review Board that hasn't met until 2013. Policy practice. Yep. Um, uh, and then we got to, and David actually, as we're having this conversation, reminded all of us, um, the addendum A, um, we had this long conversation about <laughs> talking about changing and all that stuff, but we can't change it. It's state statute. The question is, because that's the in a, you know, this is the act of 1959, which made it so we can have RTM. I think the question on this one is, do we keep it as an addendum or does it go away? Yeah. You know, that's the bigger question. Does it need to be there? And we don't do any editing of it. Well, yeah, we can't, if, we, we, which we started to yeah. do <laughs> until it was well, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The town staff recommended all these changes to yeah. the law from 1959. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're like, oh, yeah. That. So that's the question on that one. Keep that's like a keep in or take out kind of thing. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, would you entertain a 
five minute substantive discussion of what the what you just framed rather than just having this be a listing oh yeah for, for the addendum oh yeah it feels really clear to me it has felt clear to me just in doing work under the charter over the years and it feels even clearer with the way you just um, presented that that this actually is a source of confusion this has a negative impact on town operations it's not um, it's not to me a question of like how helpful is it or is it really needed anymore um, the fact that it is the action that the state took decades ago that makes it possible for us to have the RTM stuff that we have is interesting from a historical perspective but actually confusing from an operational perspective and I think we should decide right now that we're not going to keep this addendum in that it exists in state statute and people want to go research the history of RTM they can find it um, but what we're going to do about RTM is agree on the language to put forth to the community that speaks to what it is or what we think it ought to be going forward what if we kept the reference to the statute some sure yeah I, I think mean, in, just, the just in the RTM section in the RTM section just refer to the statute yes. itself yes and then people can go look at it and totally. it is in the preamble of a short reference and that's certainly where I would want it yeah mm -hmm. um, and I mean it's just says the acts of you know 1959 um, and the title of it but otherwise yeah I guess I'm curious I don't mean to <laughs> but like how does having that addendum actually impact daily work of the town so it doesn't impact the daily work of the town, but when questions about RTM come up, and they come up fairly often, because there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions about like what's working, what's not working, and does it have to be this way? Can't it be some other way? We get into this situation of there's these two different things that speak to RTM. There's the stuff that's actually in the charter about RTM and how members are elected, and um, that it you know shall meet on the. Saturday, I should know this by yeah. road, but like the third Saturday, Saturday after, after town meeting day or whatever Tuesday, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so the so there's the stuff that is actually directly relevant and applicable to the, you know yeah we need to do this because this is what our charter says is our obligation, and then there's this historical language which um, you know is um, at times I I can't point you this evening to a particular example if anybody doesn't feel comfortable just making this decision tonight, I totally respect that. And we could do a more careful um, pointing out of places where it has become confusing. But I, I can just say from experience, there are times when somebody will point out language in this addendum and say, yeah, but that was in 1959, and there's actually been multiple charter changes since then, and you know, this is the language that we have to abide by. Well, it says here something else, and it just doesn't need to exist. It's an artifact rather than a um, useful, Sort of directive so, to be clear piece. you think the way it acts now is we live in the charter that's grounded in which we cannot change the acts of 1959 that's correct it is the foundation we whatever we can change we have changed because we open the charter every 15 years exactly and then if if we were to want to do something really quite differently with this um, if we write it into the charter that we propose and the towns people approve it and the legislature approves it, then this Act of 59 becomes even more archaic and useless. Um, it already differs in certain ways from how we actually function, and that can get confusing. Are there things in here that are not elsewhere that we need to incorporate into the charter? We could look at that, but my, my, um, my personal opinion is um, that can be part of like what we look at as we're looking at other things as we're hearing from people from the community so I mean there's not a reason not to read this again and, and consider what it says um, but I don't feel like we um, there's nothing in here that 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 we would have to pull from here because it exists here does that make sense mm -hmm. but as part of our just taking in all the information we can take in to make a good fully informed decision about what RTM ought to be, or whether it even ought to be going forward. Um, yeah, I think another reread of this for us makes sense, but for it to um, stay attached to our charter document feels to me like actually would be a mistake. Not just not needed, but a mistake. 
But in place of having the uh, original charter that authorized town meeting, seems to me that we could consider having some sort of history addendum attached to this charter that just outlines the way the charter has changed from uh, time to time. I mean, there was a change this past year that was finally adopted uh, after going to the legislature a couple of times saying that kids can vote. And, you know, in my, in my day job, under the statutes, there's at least a brief summary of the changes to these laws as they've been amended incrementally over the years. And we did a bunch of work. We, you two, did a lot of work going through the history of charter changes. And it might be useful, rather than just having mm -hmm. the 1959 legislation, to prepare some sort of running history of the way in which the charter has changed um, from amendment to amendment. So that can then serve as a model going forward and a record going forward as more changes happen over the years. And not specific to RTM, but right. about every charter thing. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, I agree with that. There's sort of, again, going back to our day jobs, there's, there's, there's sort of the, the rules method where you say this edit was made in this year, or there's the statute one where you just list the citation of every change that got made. And I guess we would have to sort of decide at some point, but it doesn't have to be like an essay, a giant long diatribe. It can no. just be a simple like, yeah. this is what changes were made when, so say the next charter review committee, the almost year that's taken now mm -hmm. to sort of compile this history. And, yeah. yeah, and it can, and it can be stuff. something that's like the more substantive changes, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to like we change this whole thing, but it can be, you know, here are some of the larger changes between that and that. And then we have the history somewhere else that people can, if they want to know more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hadn't thought about that before, but when yeah. we're removing uh, that historical document, it might make sense to memorialize yeah. what we've figured out here for the commissions that come after. Mm -hmm. The staff on this list doesn't talk about addendum B, which is um, rules of procedure for town meeting. And I, I think we ought to look at that and see how relevant that still is and and um under policy please yes yeah. mm -hmm. it was a big thing 15 years ago <laughs> to make a change that everybody had to stand rather than just having voice vote so people yeah. could be accountable yeah yeah, I wouldn't mind revisiting that one. <laughs> I like standing. Okay. Give <laughs> and have some exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. um, then we get to addendum C, which is the big question of what to do with the school board. No, that one was A. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, C. No. That's, you're oh, right. Sorry. C that? is the boards and commissions. Yeah. Um, all the boards and commissions, do we list them? Do we not? That would be add, delete, modify, because it either matches practice or it doesn't. It's not one um, And then the last thing is the list, and I think we all can agree on these. Well, we know they have to change, which is taking out all the references to the school district. So that is just you know, edits that we need to make because it's a change of policy. Mm -hmm. And then the very last one is gender. Yeah. And I'm assuming we just, I think these are just, it's like a simple edit. As long as we can agree on what we're going to do. Hopefully simple. Um, and you know, once, like what Maya and I will do is put these in categories and then we can all look at them again to see if somebody thinks there's a, it's in the wrong thing or if we have it in two, you know, it should only be one box. Do you know what I mean? 
and we'll put these into topics. And then you'll do um, the same thing, you know, meld it into when we hear from department heads. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the goal would be for all of us to sort of agree on, okay, we figured out what the topics are, what's the best, you know, what's the, the when should we have, you know, talk about these topics, how should we talk about it, especially when you're talking about RTM, and figuring out what we want. So hopefully, if this works right, we'll get ourselves focused a little bit, and then we get the public more involved. Does this make sense? Yes. Thank you. Um, see. You triggered a, a thought in my mind that was brought up at select board, so I apologize it drifted, but we talked about this, um, <clears throat> which, so you said in communicating, um, so there is a golden thread, um, but it's not about these edits, um, was um, a couple of the select board members, just to, I think, make conversation, asked why did we join the commission. Mm -hmm. Why did we apply and why did we do it? And like, what are what are our thought, kind of general thoughts? And that was a thought to personalize and you know this process as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. this working thing. So as we think about going forward and trying to get participation, yeah. what we feel comfortable with as a commission sharing to the public. And if that means little things that get put out in the media to say, this is who I am, I applied at this time, and this is what I'm excited about, or this is what I'm thinking about. So that way, and so yes, obviously that's a bit of exposure, personal exposure, so seeing how folks feel about that, but as we think about the communication, um, to potentially pepper in some of these as well. Obviously that is, I think, a plus on our work because we do not have to expose ourselves in that way, but if it helps participation. And maybe it doesn't have to be about ourselves. Maybe it is just about the work, but we author something. Yeah. Yeah. But it also has to be how what we're doing impacts the people that live in this community. So what you're saying, I totally agree with you. And it's making it personal to the people too, that what we're doing, you may not think it impacts you, but it might. And it does with ways you just don't know. So I agree with you. Yeah. D does anybody who's watching on Zoom have anything they want to say? <laughs> okay. Good work. So our next meeting in February. Oh. Would you like to hear from Excellent. David Levenbach? Yes. Yes. Just to, say, Hi, just to say I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate the work. Um, but I would ask, can you post on your web uh, page the uh, pages that the staff presented to you? Because I don't think they're there yet. Maybe they're coming. And thank you for your work. And I'll see you, I expect, on the 17th. 16th, 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 November 16th. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so our next meeting is November 16th, and that's when we're going to get the information on what the town committee's mm -hmm. recommendations they have. Is that right, Patrick? Um, <laughs> I certainly hope so. I think so. Um, <laughs> We've been in touch with the various committees, um, their, their chairs, and um, um, let them know they're not required to take a stance on the charter, but we gave them a couple of months there. So they had the opportunity to warn a meeting, consider the charter, uh, consider their uh, combined opinions. Um, I made sure to let everybody know as you requested. Um, uh, the, the commission was seeking the committee's stance, and so um, individual committee members are always welcome to any meeting. Um, but if there was a specific committee stance on the charter, that uh, uh, the November meeting would be the ideal time for that. And I wouldn't be surprised if the finance committee has something to say. 
they're always a hot topic. Yes, they are. <laughs> you have a, we're we're going to have to have a, a meeting just on the finance committee, I can tell you now. <laughs> okay, does anyone else have anything else they want to talk about? Yeah, I do. It's kind of, it's kind of under um, meeting schedule, but oh, yeah. also other business. So there's a subset of us who are going to take a look at the other charters from mm -hmm. places around the state. Um, and I just wanted to um, note that, and um, I believe it was the two of you. I'm sorry I didn't write down names, but I know there were two other people who were interested. Is it Joy and Denise? Great. So I'd just like to um, make clear to the public that we should begin our work soon um, on that so that we're ready to present something early in the new year. Um, and then um, confirm for my own. Uh, uh, reminder that it's the three of us so I'll reach out to the two of you and we can schedule a time it won't be a public meeting because it's a subset of the you know we don't constitute a quorum of the Commission it'll help us organize our work so we know what each one of us is going to be doing to pull it together so, you, um, you still have that information right that information being the the, the, the big the, the but yeah page. I know where to get it it's a, a, <laughs> a part of the statutes I know where to go online for that Part of what I want to discuss is, um, you know, wh whether we're each going to try to read through all of them or whether we're going to divvy up the work, and, um, and we can deal with that, I think, separately, and then bring it back to you all. But um, in much the way that the two of you have been operating so yeah. beautifully to, you know, do a lot of lifting on our collective behalf and the brand here, um, I think we're well equipped to do the same thing, and we just need to connect and start that. So um, I won't be able to do that in the next couple of days, but by early next week, I'll have written to you, and we can get together. Thanks. Do we have meetings scheduled, subject matter oriented, after November 16th? Yeah, there is December. a December meeting yeah. that what has been it's, pushed out. What is its topic? Gen general public input? I think we have to think about, maybe we can think about that on the 16th, what that means to us, mm -hmm. if anything, at that point. Mm -hmm. It may be that beginning to have subject matter oriented meetings is a better way to focus mm -hmm. what's going to happen because yeah. just a very general meeting. It may be that we're not going to get anybody here because right. there's no focused mm -hmm. discussion. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the December meeting is the 14th, is that right? Uh, it's the third Thursday. Um, give me a moment. I'll so that's over. just before, that's the 21st. Mm -hmm. Yep, December 21st, 615. Is that, is anyone going to come to that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking like public. Do people go away? That should be a little early. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. The same Sunday school? Or maybe at the next meeting we have, we can decide, uh, begin discussing that. Yeah, because we'll know. We'll have for content. Yeah, and we'll have a better. Why and I will have something ready for you folks to look at based on what we talked about tonight, and that may help us focus a little bit more on what we want to do when. If that makes sense to you. Hannah and I also had an opportunity to talk about um, how we're going to begin inputting changes yeah. and we should start thinking I think about logistics yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we do want to have a word version of the current charter and then I don't know if it's going to be one of us or more than one of us or if we want to have staff responsible for making changes after we mark up in pen for example but we should think logistically how we're going to begin going through this yeah strike out an underlay yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right for a master copy so you know we'll have other pieces that we're working with at different times, but there should be one place where it's strike out and underline changing what exists today into what we're recommending. Yeah, um, Maya had the, it was one of the previous commission, like the way that they actually oh. did that. It's like with different colors and different yeah. sort of. I had yeah. that. That, I, would, that was. Did I give that to you, Patrick? To, remember that, that one that was the strike out one, the most recent one? Did I give that to you? Was, it, was that the one that had a lot of edits in red? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's up on the website. Oh. Is that? I didn't know it was there. I do like the idea of separate colors, though, to say, to 
to signify these are the simple edits and matching practice, right? This is the policy version. Well, and I edits. think it was even sort of broken down to this has been deleted entirely versus this has been moved. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And if that's on the website, we can all look at it. Because I know, I think you have the, I have one copy and you have the other. They're like only two actual hard copies that existed of that. And I gave you one and I kept the other. And I think you were going to copy, like do something for us so we can each have one of those copies. Do you know what I'm talking about? I could be wrong. I I'm having little, trouble hearing you, I'm sorry oh, to I'm say. Sorry. I, if there's a it's document funny. I can find for you, it's, I'm happy to do so. I'm sorry, if I keep forgetting how it's done. Um, it's the document, I think at the last meeting, or the meeting before then, I found a document from the last time the charter was changed. Okay. And it was green, it was the strikeout one with the green and the red. And mm -hmm. I had two copies, and I kept one. And then I think I gave you the other one, and you were going to like copy it and send it to us so we could see the colors. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, because there was some photocopy here, a photocopier here that thinks. I, I definitely recall that you, you, Do you, you had a document and had some colors on yeah. it. Yeah. I'm also colorblind, so <laughs> useless. I um, but I, I, I remember yeah. specifically scanning it in color so that we could get it on the website so that those colors could stand out. Okay, um, and, and what we didn't know is what, that it's on the website. I think that's the thing. So we'll go on the website and then we can. So I think we should yeah. probably look at that and decide if we want to stick with that same system yeah. or if there's anything we want to change about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. In terms of the good. actual procedure for making the edits. That sounds good. Yeah. And it does seem to make sense probably that stuff gets submitted to staff to maintain that master version as we're working through this rather than yeah. one of us mm -hmm. trying to maintain the uh, current copy of the document. Yeah, I, I, it's a really good point. And we should prepare ourselves with, you know, one, one place where the one true document stays and then, you know, if, if a group of you or if all of you are going to be working on a particular section, we could carve out that section. You could do a strikeout and underline on that section or on the entire document, bring that back, you know, and, and, and we can collect those as you approve them, set them aside, and then take them all, edit the, the one document, and yeah. you then have your, your first draft. So we'll make sure Jessica's got a current version of the current charter yes we have starters that. yeah yep that didn't work yes great yep. cool good okay. move to adjourn mm -hmm. all is in favor of adjourning okay we'll see everybody on the 16th I was, I was just trying to read the sense of the rule. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>